Arriving at the Iraq inquiry this morning, Tony Blair, the most highly anticipated person to appear before the panel. Guarded by security, his arrival via a side entrance at the QE2 centre in London mocked by protesters. Anti-war campaigners had gathered outside, kept away and angry at their handling by police. The police have not allowed us to demonstrate outside uh, the conference centre. They've pushed us back. They've got huge numbers of barriers and uh, uh, huge numbers of police to protect a man that many people in this country think is a war criminal. Inside, the former Prime Minister took his seat in preparation for six hours of questioning. Morning. Inquiry Chairman Sir John Chilcott laid out what would be on the agenda. I would like to begin the proceedings just by observing that the broad question by many people who have spoken and written to us so far is why really did we invade Iraq, why Saddam and why now in March 2003? Under questioning, Tony Blair said the 9-11 attacks on the US transformed British policy towards Saddam Hussein. But this is what really changed my perception of risk, the calculus of risk for me. If those people, inspired by this religious fanaticism, could have killed 30,000, they would have. He insisted his mind on what to do wasn't made up before a meeting with the then US President George Bush in Texas in April 2002. But during the course of these discussions, do you think you gave him any commitments? The only commitment I gave, and I gave this very openly at the meet meeting, was a commitment to deal with Saddam. Now, so we you were at the, one that you had to deal absolutely. with? Absolutely. So, and that wasn't a private so, commitment, that so, was a public commitment. So you were agreed on the end, but not on the means? We were, well, we were agreed on both, actually, as it, as it came to finally. But we were agreed that we had to confront this issue, um, that Saddam had to come back into compliance with the international community. And as I think I said in the press conference with President Bush, the method of doing that is open. And on that claim that Saddam Hussein could launch weapons of mass destruction in 45 minutes... Now, I would take government right out of this altogether. I would simply have published, if the intelligence services would be willing, for it, the JIC assessments, because they were absolutely strong and often their own. This executive summary wasn't drawn up by me. It was drawn up by the Joint Intelligence Committee, and they did it perfectly justifiably on the information they had before them. It's hard to come to any other conclusion than that this person has a continuing WMD program. Tony Blair is to face further questioning this afternoon, including whether he leaned on then Attorney General Lord Goldsmith to say military action was legal. Outside the QE2 centre, the protests continue but have slightly diminished.